հարցավ Հայաստանի եւ եվրոպական միության միջև շրջանակային համաձայնագրի շուրջ բանակցությունների 8-րդ փուլը անցած նոյեմբերին Հայաստանի Արգոս նախարար Էդուարդ Նալբանդյան նշել էր որ եւս 2-3 փուլ եւ արդեն գործ ընթացը կհանգի հանգրվանին դրանից հետո տեղի է ունեցել 1 փուլ դեկտեմբերին եւս 1 հունվարին եւ ստացվում է որ մնում է 1 վերջնական փուլ շրջանակային համաձայնագրի շուրջ բանակցությունների վերջնական հանգրվանի համար Thank you. Thank you in the first place for the hospitality. I'm very grateful to the Media Center for hosting this conference. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, for me it is an occasion uh, to talk about uh, the EU-Armenia relations, uh, both in the retro aspect, uh, retro uh, as <laughs> retrospective <laughs> uh, uh, 2016 results uh, and also to look uh, into the future and to share with you uh, some of the outlooks for 2017. Uh, let me say that uh, from our perspective 2016 was a good year for the relations between the European Union and Armenia. We have had many important events. We have had an intensive political dialogue. We have had new development events, new projects and new programs which enriched the uh, fabric of the relations between Armenia and the European Union. On the political side, let me mention the visit of the High Representative uh, Federica Mogherini, who came here to Yerevan on the 1st of March 2016. Uh, we had uh, the second ever meeting, informal ministerial meeting of Eastern Partnership held in uh, Yerevan on, uh, uh, in November uh, 2016 with two commissioners visiting Armenia, Commissioner Han and uh, Commissioner Moedas. Uh, we had um, the usual, the regular sessions of the Cooperation Council in Brussels in January 2016, chaired by the Foreign Minister of the Netherlands and uh, the Foreign Minister of Armenia, Minister Nalbandian. We had uh, the meeting of the Cooperation Committee in December in Brussels, and we had uh, six rounds of the negotiations on the new framework agreement relating mainly to the political part. In addition to this, we have had numerous uh, sessions of the trade negotiators and uh, experts involved in other aspects of the framework agreement. On the development cooperation side, last year was really an exceptional year. We set a new record in terms of funds transferred from Brussels to Armenia. Last year, we transferred to Armenia 62 million euros in development cooperation. And we signed new contractual obligations in the amount of more than or almost 50 million euros. Uh, to give you the sense of the increase in 2014, we transferred around 25 million euros to Armenia. And last year, as you can see, more than 60 million, 62 million euros. Uh, we have had several important developments, two important financing agreements signed last year, one uh, relating to jobs, labor market and education, amounting to 15 million, and one 
relating to the reform of uh, public finances amounting to 10 million. We have had several important projects finalized. You still remember the opening of the Bagratashen border crossing, financed by the loan from the European institutions, the EBRD, and supported by the grant of the European Union. We have had other important developments in the field of agriculture, the first results of the NPART program. Hundreds of Armenian farmers benefited from the participation. You have heard probably about the pilot project relating to the buckwheat production, very successful, if I'm not mistaken, judged by the public reactions. Uh, we have had uh, other important developments, uh, new involvement of the European Union to promote regional development. You probably still remember that uh, in December uh, we signed financing agreements concerning uh, seven projects to be implemented in the regions of Armenia worth of uh, more than 9 million euros in uh, Shirak, Lori, Sunik, Armavir and Vajadzor, Gegarkunik and Tavush. Uh, we also noted the fact that Armenia joined Horizon 2020 and COSME, huge European Union uh, projects relating to creativity and the support to small and medium enterprises. Multi-billion programs of the European Union. Also, as you know, the European Union has supported the electoral deal preparing the next national elections the European Union has allocated up to 7 million euros to support the implementation of the electoral deal for the next elections. So, as you can see from this very brief description, last year was a busy year, but it was a successful year. And let me use this opportunity to, to express our thanks to our Armenian partners, to the public officials, starting from the leadership, going through the ministries with whom we cooperate, local authorities, governors, mayors, NGO community, but also ordinary Armenians, who in particular participated in our projects and activities, thousands of Armenians who joined us to celebrate Europe Day 2016. Uh, we are very grateful for that. <coughs> As uh, I have expressed on other occasions, we have very positive experience, very positive assessment <coughs> of the work with our partners. We appreciate the professionality, we appreciate the openness and the very constructive spirit in our daily contacts and daily activities. So big thank you to Armenians from the government, from the civil society, and big thanks to ordinary Armenians. Okay. Ես կարծում եմ շնորհակալությունը պարոն Դեսպանը արդեն հասկանում է հայերեն վերադառնալով շրջանակային համաձայնագրի ստորագրման վերաբերյալ հարցին արդյոք արդեն մոտեցել ենք հանգրվանին եւ Բրյուսելում առաջիկա բանակցությունների փուլը կարող է լինել վերջնականը վերջինը Good let me use your question to talk about the plans for 2017. Uh, what do we expect from 2017? 
uh, we expect the momentum, this good momentum of relations to be maintained and to be taken to a new level. Yes, as you mentioned in your question, we believe that uh, 2017 will uh, bring the new framework agreement into reality. The prospects are quite optimistic. Uh, we are indeed in the final stages of the negotiations. Very heavy work on the part of our Armenian partners, but also my colleague in Brussels. And although we cannot talk about any concrete dates, I think that the negotiators are very close to the conclusion of the agreement. We can talk about it later uh, in more detail if you are interested. But uh, definitely, if everything goes well, the finalization of the negotiations will be uh, a major development, a major event in 2017. What we are also expecting is the finalization of the discussions on the partnership priorities, a politically binding document which would spell out the priorities of Armenia and the European Union within the framework of the neighborhood policy, uh, where we would uh, uh, discuss and uh, design the main avenues of our cooperation. As you know, uh, this discussion started a few months ago. A special mission came to Armenia. Uh, we received a very constructive answer feedback from the Armenian side. So hopefully in the coming weeks and months, uh, these uh, negotiations on the partnership priorities will be again uh, concluded. Uh, we also expect the finalization of the uh, discussions on the new single support framework. Single support framework is a document uh, which will uh, determine the development cooperation priorities uh, for the European Union in Armenia till 2020. Uh, so uh, we are looking forward to the uh, continuation of this good dynamics, this good momentum of last year. And as I mentioned, uh, these three important documents, starting in the first place with the framework agreement, can bring a new quality into our relations. Uh, what else can we expect from the EU side? Uh, for the European Union, in our daily contacts with our cooperation partners in Armenia, uh, there are five priorities in the coming months. What are the priorities? First, it is the election project, the successful implementation of the arrangements relating to elections on the 2nd of April, where, as I mentioned, the European Union has allocated quite a substantial sum of money. So the, the new elections, the upcoming national elections, will be in the center of our attention. Secondly, we want to continue our discussions on improving business climate in Armenia with the government, with business organizations, in particular the European Business Association, improving the business climate based on the declarations and plans of the new government for the European Union will be an important uh, element of our uh, contacts with the Armenian uh, partners. Uh, the third priority will remain the cooperation and the assistance that we are uh, affording to Armenia in fighting corruption. Uh, as you know, the European Union has allocated uh, more than 15 million euros to support Armenia in the fight against corruption, and we are ready to work together so that uh, tangible results are seen by the population, by the people of Armenia in these joint activities. Another important 
platform for our cooperation and discussions will be the implementation of human rights uh, contract, human rights uh, budget support contract, which is a very important document with clear commitments relating to five priority areas between Armenia and the European Union and the issue of human rights and these uh, benchmarks that were jointly agreed will be for us a very important aspect of our contacts. And fifthly, what uh, will be important for us will be to discuss uh, how to strengthen the independence of judiciary on the basis of the recent uh, pronouncements of the new government and uh, on the basis of the fact that the European Union uh, has allocated uh, more than 50 million of euros to support the judiciary and even recently in the December a new the third tranche of our support to the reform of judiciary amounting to more than 10 million euros has been signed so we want to continue our cooperation with the Armenian side on this aspect of the independence and efficiency of judiciary. So these are uh, the five areas where we would like to continue our cooperation in 2017. Նրակալություն եթե կարելի է մի հստակ ակտիվիստող հարց ամեն դեպքում ամա շրջանակային համաձայն ագրի ստորագրման հետ կապված հնարավոր է որ այն ստորագրվի մինչև ընտրությունները եւ որքանով է այս նախընտրական շրջանը կամ ընտրությունների անցկացումը կարող է ազդեցություն ունենալ այս գործընթացի հետաձգման վրա The European Union uh, is not bound by any developments on the political, political calendar, in particular the domestic political calendar of Armenia. What I can say on the basis of uh, what I saw during the last, the ninth round of the negotiations here in Yerevan, the negotiators are on both sides are uh, deploying really a, a dedicated effort in order to finalize the negotiations. I think that uh, the progress is uh, really impressive. Uh, the number of issues which are still open and require additional effort is quite limited. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, there are good prospects to finalize the discussions in the coming weeks. Uh, how it relates to the date of the elections, I don't want to speculate. Uh, uh, as I said, from the EU point of view, we are ready to spend all the necessary efforts, time, energy in the coming weeks so that uh, really the time to necessary to finalize the, the agreement will be quite short. Thank you. Եթե կարելի է ես եւս մեկ հարց ուղեմ, ապա կտամ ձեզ հնարավորություն հարցեր տալու։ Պարոնդեսպան գաղտնիկ չէ, որ Եվրամիությունը ի սկզբանե ուշադրությամբ հետևում էր նոր ընտրական օրենց գրքի ձևավորմանը եւ նաեւ կարեւոր դերակատարություն է ստանձնել, ինչի մասին նաեւ դուք հիշատակեցիք ընտրությունների թափանցիկությունը ապահովող մեխանիզմների գործարկման առումով հատկացնելով շուրջ 7 միլիոն եվրո։ Պարոնդեսպան թեև անցած տարի հունիսին հիշում են 4+4+4 ձևաչափով համաձայնություն ձերբերվեց բավականին խոստումնալից փոփոխությունների ներառմամբ մենք հիշում ենք որ օգոստոսին դրանք չեղարկվեցին ֆինանսական միջոցների բացակայության եւ ժամանակի սղության պատճառաբանության ապա սեպտեմբերի 13-ին եղավ եւս մեկ համաձայնություն անդիմադիր որոշ ուժերի եւ իշխանությունների միջեւ եւ այդ համաձայնության հետ կապված դուք լավատեսական կանխատեսումներով հանդես եկաք բայց օրերս հայտնի դարձավ որ 
Dragan Orange Gurki voci în Nakam, Bazle Ratsuci, Jeff Shat, care vor mi pahanji head capfat, te sa ha tsikneri, te raderman, Jeff Arthan, te raderman head capfat, ca ruin hantir nerzakel, ca ni vor sa mamba jamketum mecazma, 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 ca ni vor sa vor sa mamba jamketum mecazma, ca ni vor sa mamba jamketum mecazma, ca ni vor sa mamba jamketum Man hera ne carin e vai sira vii jaki het capat. Let me first of all express my very sincere appreciation of the big effort done by all stakeholders, all parties involved, to implement the electoral deal concluded in September. I can tell you that uh, the last months were putting a lot of burden and pressure on all of us, the donors, the government, and also the implementing agency, in order to make this arrangement really work. Because uh, what we are talking about is a very complex undertaking to be implemented in a very short period of time. What I can tell you with uh, really great satisfaction is that uh, the last months of 2016 marked a very successful effort. Uh, what I mean by the successful effort is that uh, the part dealing with the, uh, the voter identification technology has been uh, very efficiently uh, taken up and implemented by UNDP that the money pledged by donors, by the European Union, but also by the United States, Germany, United Kingdom, and also the contribution of the Armenian government has been put into this uh, envelope, the, the basket, so-called, so that everything was processed duly, despite the fact that it was a very complicated process. I can tell you from the point of view of the procedures and the, the necessary financial requirements, it has really been a, a very busy time. And what we appreciate very much as the European Union is the very constructed attitude on the part of our government partners, uh, with, with, without whom we could not be in a position as the European Union to transfer the money. And uh, I think that uh, keeping my fingers crossed, the voter identification technology uh, will be coming soon to Armenia. We will have a trial. Uh, running of this technology in February, and our colleagues from the UNDP are doing really a great job so that everything is in place for the election day. Uh, the other part of uh, the electoral deal, uh, as you know, is the video camera part. Uh, here, uh, the discussions are continuing because uh, uh, it is uh, a fact that uh, the, bid, the bidder suggested a price for a very, let's say, <coughs> demanding uh, parameters, which is uh, too big for the available funds. Uh, but I can say that uh, I am moderately optimistic that uh, a solution will be found in agreement with the company as a satisfactory solution uh, which can be accepted by the political stakeholders, uh, political parties who are working in the parliamentary commission supervising the implementation of the deal. From our perspective, from the perspective of the donor, the European Union, uh, we would appeal to have a, a reasonable compromise. Probably we cannot have a solution which would satisfy all stakeholders on the opposition side or on the 
governing coalition side probably will be difficult. Also because the time is very short, the time is unbelievably short. Uh, but we as the European Union, we encourage the stakeholders to agree on a reasonable compromise. And we hope very much that such a reasonable compromise, which would allow the implementation of the other part of the deal, uh, will be found. I am an optimist and I use this opportunity to appeal to all our partners uh, to work together such a solution, which we know it already. It will not be a perfect solution. It will not be a solution which will give 100% guarantee that uh, you know, everything is done so that no loophole is, is left. But from our perspective, it's better to, to go for the implementation, even if it's not perfect. <laughs> Նարինեիրիթյան <San> Նաև ասել ով է կոնկրետ այդ հայտատերը եւ եթե կարելի է մեկ հարց եւս կան դուրեր որ կոնկրետ տեսախցիկների հետ կապված է տեխնիկական զուտ նաեւ uh, what I can tell you is that, uh, to my knowledge, because we as the European Union, we do not participate in these discussions, uh, but to my knowledge, uh, a very intensive dialogue has been conducted in the recent days. I think even yesterday the Parliamentary Commission uh, worked late into the night discussing possible options. Uh, to my knowledge, uh, they achieved a kind of working consensus. Uh, and what I really appreciate is the fact that they are really trying to find the best solution. Differences of opinion, differences of opinion, different priorities are quite a natural element of this process. Uh, the other aspect is to find a solution which will be implementable by the company. Uh, I believe that uh, it is possible to find a good arrangement with the company. Probably there is no time to start the process uh, from the scratch, from the beginning. Uh, there are different technical options, and I think they will be discussed even today and probably tomorrow, uh, because definitely, bearing in mind the, the time shortage, a solution should be find, found in the coming hours or days. At least, I think, by the end of the week, uh, we will have a clarity what is doable and whether it is doable. Uh, concerning uh, the question of the VAT, uh, I, to my knowledge, uh, the government uh, is ready to do everything possible in order not to uh, have this factor uh, complicating the solution. So if you ask me, from our discussion with the government, we can detect a, a very constructive approach. Uh, as you know, the European Union has a convention with Armenia, which uh, uh, relieve all our projects from VAT. When the European Union is spending money in Armenia, 
implementing this project. Uh, the government is uh, offering uh, VAT waivers. Uh, I, and I think that uh, this project, this election project, bearing in mind that this is funded by the European Union, uh, can be also considered to be sui generis EU project. But uh, I think that the position of the government is on this issue uh, quite constructive. Pardon, <laughs> Let me tell you very, very openly that by the EU standards, the pace of negotiations on this new framework agreement has been very fast and very constructive. Normally, uh, negotiations on bilateral agreements of similar sort uh, take more time. I'm saying it's from the EU perspective. Maybe from the uh, Armenian perspective uh, it will look differently, but from the EU perspective these negotiations have been very fast negotiations. Again, if you also take into account the frequency of meetings, the pace of the dialogue, it was really quite fast, quite quick. Uh, the issues that uh, are still open are issues which, in a sense, they, they are not, let's say, politically so difficult to put into doubt uh, the solution. Uh, but as you know from any international relations documents, there are issues which uh, require more time for thinking. Some require even mm, several attempts for trying to find the best language. Even if you agree on the essence, you need time to think about the proper language to express your agreement. Uh, therefore, uh, from our perspective, uh, while recognizing that you know, uh, despite uh, several months of negotiations, there are still open issues, but uh, we do not see any reason to cast any doubt that th these issues can be solved and settled uh, within a reasonable period of time. But what is important uh, for us, and uh, this is something that uh, I think he, the chief negotiator on the EU side, Luke Devin, even expressed last week when he was here interviewed in Armenia. Uh, what we can see is that we have a, a very sincere effort, a, a very constructive approach uh, on both sides, including on the Armenian side. Uh, what are the open issues related to? Of course, they are related to the new circumstances that emerged after uh, 2013 and the aborted association DCFTA uh, agreement. What are the issues? They are related to the membership of Armenia in the Eurasian Economic Union. Uh, they are related to some other developments also on the EU side, uh, having to do with, for instance, discussion on investment protection. Uh, in the EU context. Uh, many of you have followed the discussions on TIP, this uh, free trade uh, agreement with the United States or uh, the CETA, the free trade agreement with Canada. 
And you realized, probably, that some of the issues of uh, relating to trade and investment on the EU side are seen now in a different context than three years ago. Uh, so these are new factors. As I said, they are new on the Armenian side, mainly relating to the membership in the Eurasian Economic Union, and new on the EU side, mainly relating to the internal discussions in the European Union concerning, in particular, the investment protection arrangements. And they have to be accommodated. Uh, so it takes time. And I think that we should avoid, you know, hurrying up things, because some of the issues really require consultation, reflection. On the EU side, as you know, we have to consult very closely member states. So even if the institutions like the Commission or External Action Service, which is conducted negotiations, is fine with some uh, compromises, we have to go back to member states and seek their approval. Uh, so what I can do is to assure the Armenian public that the effort is very serious, constructive, and sincere. Yes. Uh, uh, I, I am reluctant to pass you my comment on that because I know that as we speak, responsible people are having very serious discussions. I cannot you know, prejudge the outcome of these discussions and I don't want to make these discussions more difficult by passing public judgments. Again, people on all sides, the government, the opposition, the company, and us as the donors are now trying to come to a, you know, a good solution, a good so uh, settlement of this uh, dilemma. Because dilemma is big. As I said, the dilemma re relates to the uh, limited funds available and the scarcity of time. Because we are now end of January, and we essentially have two months to install everything and to check it and to you know, run it. Two months only. Uh, but as I told you, uh, as long as these discussions and very, I would say, honest effort is being undertaken, let's refrain from comments, public statements. And what about the outcome of uh, elections? And if they won't meet your expectations, how it will affect on Armenia EU relations? This. Uh, I have spoken many times on this. Uh, the, the next elections will be important, will be important for the future of, Mar of Armenia in particular. And this is something what uh, the leadership of uh, the Republic of Armenia has said on many occasions, the President, the Prime Minister. Uh, this is something what the opposition parties are saying. So I think that uh, in all corners of the Armenian political elites, uh, and the society as well, the importance of the next elections for the future development of Armenia is recognized. It's the same from our perspective. Uh, for the future of our cooperation with Armenia, good, fair, just, transparent elections will help to boost the relationship, will help us to open new possibilities of cooperation, and would create a very good climate for the future of our contacts. Uh, also bearing in mind the fact that the European Union has invested so much in the success of these elections. 
So I can tell you, yes, I'm an optimist because we have invested so much in terms not only money but also political support that we have now a very deep and you know, clear interest in the success of the project. Im Harzer Norris Veradome and Rabai Karin, Gista Kauza Shavin de Ramanaka, Sakain Art and Zavavor Velem Goroshaki Hamagorta Kunder Dashinkner, Zergana Hatakan, the Muzumi Manal, Ishpisi Tesaketu Negdu, Orina Kashvi Arnello, or Nakim, Pashpansan, Naharaj, Sela, Nohanyan, Ansel and Dimadir Dash, Yev Porosh Artem Babarum Nelkan, Yevishpes the Ganahatak and Hanur Arman Pai Kara. Արդյո՞ք համապատասխան խանում է նաև ձեր չափանիշների եւ ընդհանրապես ընտրական այս մտնոլորտը նախակ հարոշչական մտնոլորտը ինչպես կգնահատեք For us what is important is the uh, clean nature of the process uh, not the contents therefore we don't have a view on this or that political figure or this or that political party. This is purely Armenian. We have nothing to do with it. What we are interested in is uh, the clean nature of the campaign. And of course then all the procedures on the voting days, voting day and afterwards. Two aspects are important. One aspect is uh, the prevention of political corruption. The Electoral Code of Armenia contains appropriate provisions prohibiting making promises or pledges of money or other favors in exchange for, for votes. So the legislation is there. What is needed is uh, the <clears throat> appropriate approach on the part of law enforcement. What I can tell you is that uh, I can see really very serious uh, preparedness on the part of the law enforcement activities of Armenia to deal with uh, this aspect of the political campaign, electoral campaign. Uh, I will be having meetings, and my meetings so far show that uh, the law enforcement institutions of Armenia are on guard, they are aware of the challenge, and I hope very much that uh, they will be taking the appropriate action. The other aspect, which judged on the basis of previous reports by uh, the international organizations, OSC, Council of Europe, is the use of administrative resources. Again, there are uh, very good provisions in the electoral code prohibiting the use of administrative resources in line with international standards. But what is important is to ensure the application of these provisions in everyday practice. Uh, so in terms of electoral campaign, another important aspect, of course, access to uh, information channels, media. Here Armenia has uh, quite a good tradition of uh, open access to media outlets. Uh, if you look back to previous reports by the international observations uh, in the region, in the post-Soviet space, Armenia has quite a high standing of course, you have political parties who will be in more advantageous position. You will have political parties with less advantageous position for different reasons. But again, the rules are clear, and we hope very much that uh, the international standards will be applied. Uh, so uh, uh, I think that uh, even well before the formal start of the electoral campaign, 
we should be paying uh, all the attention so that the process is clean, is fair, in line with international standards. Then comes the election day uh, with all the challenges that we know from the past. We hope very much that the technology that is now being procured and installed will help to prevent uh, bad things happening. Then we have, of course, the, the aspect of uh, vote count and uh, the complaints, the procedure for lodging complaints and for dealing with complaints. So we as the European Union, uh, we are, of course, uh, for the reasons that I have outlined, uh, dedicating all our attention and efforts to watch the developments, uh, but uh, on the part of the international community, what is good is that the OSC is ready to deploy the full observation mission. So there will be long-term observers, there will be short-term observers, there will be uh, the, the local observers from the civil society. And I think that uh, we will have all the instruments which will allow us to, to judge the fairness of the process from the day one of the electoral campaign. Նակալչուն եթե կարելի մի փոքր ենթահարց դիտորդների եւ լրագրողների մասին դու քիշակ բարկեցիք նրանց աշխատանքի կարևորությունը կա հասարակության ներկայացուցիչները մտահոգի չեն համարում այս ընտրական օրը զգրկում դիտորդների եւ լրագրողների թվի եւ ընտրատեղամասում նրանց գործառույթների որոշակի սահմանափակումը մարտանշելով ինչպիսին է ձեր դիրքորոշումը սրա հետ կապված We are aware of the concerns raised by civil society organizations. We are aware of the concerns raised by um, uh, the journalists, uh, media outlets. Uh, I can tell you that there have been discussions uh, with the government, uh, with political parties, uh, before the adoption of the electoral code concerning this aspect. Uh, the main channel was uh, OSC, Council of Europe or the Venice Commission channel. Uh, we received uh, assurances uh, from the government officials that these provisions will not be used in order to limit the, the scope of the activities of the observers or the media. Uh, that these are provisions which are there in order to avoid worst case scenarios, uh, including uh, chaotic situations in the polling stations, which cannot be excluded. Uh, I can say that I can understand the logic that uh, the responsibility for the smooth conduct of elections is always with the government, the government institutions, central electoral commission, and all the services of the government. Uh, so they have a special responsibility, and they have the right to think about worst case scenarios. What we hope very much that the assurances that we have received, and I personally received in my very frank conversations with, with the officials of Armenia, that these provisions will not be used in order to uh, restrict the, the freedom of activity of observers, will not be used uh, in order to restrict the uh, perception of the activities in the uh, polling stations, uh, that they, these assurances that uh, will be uh, kept and that on the election day we will not have signals that uh, uh, observers feel uh, uh, somehow limited in their legitimate activities. So uh, I'm looking forward to really good um, conduct of the elections, of course anything may happen. I always refer to the experiences of uh, other well-established democracies that, uh, you know, uh, we must be realistic. Elections are never perfect, even in perfect democracies. <laughs> but what I think that uh, what we are hearing is that these elections will be of new quality. Uh, 
that these elections will restore the trust of the citizens, of ordinary uh, voters, in the fairness of the process and in the fact that the outcome of the elections reflect the will of the population. So uh, this is what uh, should be our common aim, to restore trust, restore confidence, and build a new quality in the electoral process. Thank you. Pantrian? Anna Azad Neragdov. In the Kakshkume Mihart, Yemai Dramash Norain Mijotsnera Hapstakelu, Aitah Makaharut Gorso, Mankitan, or Hasarakakan, Kasmakepsnetas, Nerka Tushi, Maradran Ker, Nerka Tsvat. In the Kakshkume Arto, Arto, Yema Hastanian, the Rasinaki, Ashkatakis, Nevorum, Drama Drum, and I Dramash Norna Yepera Skuman. I Triakan Gortum, Voreven, Nerka Tsununen, Nergravat and Tevoch, Yep Inch Kerpo. Yet a voice or took Nansha Nakum and Ashkatel, Yemai Hastan and Rasina. I am reluctant to answer to a question because your question contains uh, allegations which uh, I cannot dignify by answering to a question. What I can tell uh, all colleagues here is that. Uh, we are very happy with the way the investigation committee is conducting its, its activities concerning the embezzlement cases. We are cooperating very closely. We are providing all the necessary documentation. As you know, these embezzlement cases were discovered by the European Union, by our services. It is on our request that the investigation committee is has taken up these cases and is doing its job. And I can tell you, uh, I am impressed by the professionality of uh, your officers uh, conducting this investigation and the activities. And I think uh, this uh, productive cooperation is very useful for both sides, for Armenia and for the European Union. What I want to say is that these cases, very sad cases, cannot cast dark clouds over the overall picture of our cooperation with Armenia, in particular our NGO partners, civil society partners. Uh, as everywhere, you know, black sheep, they happen. They are there. Uh, but uh, if you ask me, these cases, very sad cases, uh, cannot, you know, uh, somehow negate the very positive picture that I have personally as head of delegation of the way we cooperate in Armenia on development assistance. And as I said at the very beginning, uh, many countries can learn from Armenia how to negotiate financing contracts, how to implement them, and how to bring benefit from our cooperation to, to the institutions of Armenia and to the real people. But again, you, know, you have people with evil motives, you have people with weak characters, but this is the margin small margin of what we do. And again, the very fact that we have such a productive cooperation with the investigation committee, with uh, the authorities Armenia, also sends a very good signal about Armenia. Last question.
Հոսքով, ինձ հետակն է դուք գոհեք, թե միջոցներ է ինչպես են ծախսկում Հայաստանում, որով պետև ազգային ժողովում հարկայի միջոցների կննարկումների ժամանակ բազմաթիվ մտահողություններ են the figure of 62 million, this is real money, cash transfer from our bank account to Armenian bank accounts. 62 million real money, cash, last year only. 50 million euros, this is the overall uh, allocation to the reform of judiciary in Armenia throughout the years of our cooperation. So we go back. Ten years ago, this is this is the the amount. Uh, whether we are satisfied, this is a question that Armenian institutions and Armenian public should answer. What we wanted to show is that we are very open to take criticism and to remove weak points from our cooperation. The fact that uh, the, the negotiation on the next single support framework, 2017-2020, started from asking Armenian partners, tell us what you want, is very significant. We want to really strengthen the ownership of Armenia. We want really the Armenian side to feel encouraged to define the priorities and the expectations. Maybe it was quite surprising when a big delegation came last October from Brussels and they didn't bring any paper. Oh, this is what we want to do. No. They came only with a simple question. Tell us what you want. Uh, this is something which is very seriously uh, you know, considered in Brussels because we really want the cooperation to bring more results, to be more effective. I would like even to spend maybe one day talking with you only on this issue journalists, analysts, media representatives, simply to listen from you, how you assess. I know that sometimes your assessment is quite critical. Sometimes you don't see the money. Where is the money? Where is the money? You give all these big figures. We cannot see it. <laughs> uh, and you have every right to, to say this. And, and we can take it very, very seriously. Uh, Sometimes the results are very tangible. When you have like court buildings renovated or erected on EU money, it's, I mean, you cannot deny it, it's there. Uh, when you have a road built, like North-South Corridor, again, big EU money involved. I mean, it, it's a real thing, you cannot deny it. Or if you have now the border crossings with Georgia, hmm? It's a concrete, real EU money. 90% of the money for Baghdad Hashem comes from Europe. Again, concrete thing. Uh, but there are things which are uh, probably less tangible. There are things that uh, they are less quantifiable. But still, I appreciate every signal coming from you, from the journalists, investigative journalists in particular, pointing out where we are weak, where our money doesn't bring benefit. I would even encourage you to write about it, to share with us, and to be critical. And in, since my arrival, I, I have seen uh, at least three or four very critical papers on the uh, development assistance provided by the European Union. 
And this is important because, as you know, the European Union is the number one donor. And the, we really want our money to be well appreciated by ordinary Armenians. Okay, so. Մեր հարցերին պատասխանելու եւ մեդիակենտրոնում յուրն կալվելու համար այսքանով մեր այսօրվա մամլո ասուլիսը ավարտենք շնորհակալություն նաեւ ձեզ Սիրելի գործ ընկերներ եւ ինչ հանդիպում Thank you so much thank you